We are now just three weeks away from the first presidential debate. Oh boy, and the race is now a dead heat. Political analysts Wendy Patrick and Laura Fink join us with more. Good morning to both of you ladies. Thanks for joining us. Good morning, Good morning Abby. Abby. Of course, let's talk about the debate. We want to know who really has more to lose since it's such a close race at this point. Well, um, let me just start by saying the reason, Abby, that's such a great question is because of Trump's pole vault this week. Uh, one poll came out, CNN reported almost all day yesterday on it, that actually shows him ahead of Mrs. Clinton. That's a big deal. And of course, people would say, yeah, but that's just one poll. Who knows what happened? we got to look at them in the aggregate. Nonetheless, mm. what does that do? It really puts the focus on these debates and what can be gained. And, you know, if, if I were to prep Hillary for that debate just for fun, um, there's a couple of things that I would tell her. One is to emphasize Donald Trump's you know, his reputation of flash over substance. One of the things that Hillary Clinton does is she really brings a lot of substance to the debate. She knows her stuff. She debated Barack Obama, what was it, like 24 times, Bernie Sanders seven times. I mean, there's been so much debating history and experience that she has under her belt. If she can now work on what I'll call the terms of endearment, mm -hmm. humanizing herself to her mm -hmm. audience, yeah. I think she's going to do a great job. Oh, wow. Terms of endearment, words I never thought I'd hear during this campaign <laughs> season. Okay. All right, Laura. Uh, the debate for Trump. How critical is this going to be? Because like you said, I know how we feel about polls, but it's kind of neck and neck. How mm -hmm. critical will it be for Donald Trump? Well, I would disagree that it's neck and neck. All of the polling averages <laughs> have course. her several points ahead. And then, of course, in those critical swing states, uh, he, Trump is, is behind and his path is much narrower. So, so the onus really is on Trump to prove himself. Uh, for Hillary, Hillary, it's really about maintaining her, her lead. She is more ahead than President Obama was ahead of Mitt Romney at this point last election cycle. So those are some things to keep in mind. But in terms of the debate, if I were advising Donald Trump, my list would be a list of don'ts. Don't go in unprepared. Mm -hmm. Don't mm -hmm. don't insult Hillary's face. Don't <laughs> oh, allow her, do not allow her as a skilled debater to play rope-a-dope with yeah. you. I mean, he goes into debates as a Tasmanian devil. And in fact, Act, you know, he needs to not do that because she's just going to let him wear himself out and then strike. So, so the, what, what Trump needs to do is not play into her hand. Be prepared. Have a solid temperament. What he will benefit from is the fact that our expectations for his performance are in the basement. If he shows up, stands up straight, <laughs> and doesn't throw any insults around, everybody's going to yeah. say it's a win for him. How so that's a huge advantage. How excited, well, right? honestly, are you guys for this debate? Look at they're like, Oh, they're going to be great. What's, what's well, interesting about what Laura just said is yeah. it's true that that was the way he was behaving. But remember, one of the reasons for his his pole vault this week, many people are speculating, is not so much Hillary's emails and the FBI report that came out on Friday, but the fact that Trump has really kind of stepped back, toned mm. it down, looking a little more presidential. Hillary is preparing for the debate by looking at how she can get under his skin. She's reviewing reels of what set him off during the debates on the primary. So if she can get him to lose his cool, that could make a big difference as far as you know, the bar might be low for his performance. She wants to keep it low by actually looking at what seems to set him off. Let's see if she can do it. Right, I mean, she was even interviewing his biographer to be able to see some of those points, exactly mm -hmm. like you said, that seemed to set them off. Let's talk a little bit, though. You, you touched on the emails. Let's talk about Trump first, though, facing some questions about the claims that he donated $25,000 to a group supporting Florida's attorney general influencing her review of fraud allegations against Trump University, which we've all been we're talking about here. Any fire here? Let's, let's well, head it over to Wendy first. Um, I, I was, would inject the word supposedly, because that's what everybody is talking about, is is there a correlation? It looks bad. There's, there's, no, there's no way right. of getting around that. Okay, so we've said that. Um, that may be worse given if, in combination with what Trump admitted during the primary debates. He said, I'm a businessman. I give money to everybody. Two, three years in the future, I call them. They're there for me. Those are his words. So the difference is, is it different in business than it is in politics? Trump seems to be saying yes. However, with this particular pay-to-play allegation, that's not what he's saying. Basically, the argument from the campaign is that there's no correlation. Yeah. That's what the Democrats are going to have to establish. Well, Laura? one, there is no argument from the campaign, and I'll go from Wendy supposedly to actually. Ah. He, was, ah. he, was actual, he actually made a $25,000 donation from his foundation, which is illegal, was subsequently tried to cover it up and was fined for that cover-up by the IRS. Uh, then actually, he was released from any charges 
being held or, or any sort of pursuit of justice for Trump University students by Pam Bondi. And then he actually threw a fundraiser at Mar-a-Lago. And then the final yeah. actually is what he said in this campaign. I know the system. I know how it works. It's how he explained away his contributions to Democrats. So he actually admitted that there was a pay to play element in a lot of his transactions. Now we have uh, a story that really needs to be dug into yeah. um, in parallel. I think some of that is, you know, a lot of folks are feeling like the media is, you know, easy focus on some of the smoke uh, around Hillary Clinton and her emails and the, the foundation is not being given equal treatment on the Trump side who has, has this issue. Uh, there's another issue in Texas with the attorney general sure. there and even in New York. Now we're running out of time, but I got to get to these, the report from the FBI early for, okay, let's talk about these emails again, because mm -hmm. here's what, here's what came out of it. And she apparently told investigators that she either did not recall or did not remember using those phrases at least 39 times. Does this help? I mean, are we still, uh, what, what was your yeah. take on that? Well, I'll tell you, you know what, having been a trial lawyer for my entire career, it's not a good thing when your witness simply can't recall anything. But right. on the other hand, you know, um, she is the first person that did say that it was around the time she was recovering from a concussion. <laughs> A concussion that she's fully recovered from. That is what she would argue right about now in case yeah. the, the Trump campaign wants to say, well, is she fit for president if she can't recall? If you watch her Benghazi testimony, Raul, I, there's probably no question that she's very capable of knowing what happened when. This was a period of time that she is basically excusing some of that lack of memory by her cognitive state at yeah. the time. Well, I will just say this. I've been deposed, and I said I don't recall about 150 <laughs> times. Because Never here, though. Don't run no, for no, Never right? here. Yeah. <laughs> they ask you questions, and Wendy can attest to this, having been on the other side of the deposition. You're asked questions that are so specific yeah. and so time-based from years before. And in fact, I don't recall is a pretty reasonable answer. Uh, but but uh, so, so I think that this is just another example of like digging into the weeds um, on an issue yeah. that's already played out. All right, Laura Fink, Wendy Pat. Patrick, as always, lovely to have you both. Thank you for your insights. Thanks, Thanks Raul. Thanks, Abby. Okay, so.